Welcome back troops, let's tab 59. Lovely day. Just coming back in towards the house now. I'm gonna sit on the old garden bench again, it's becoming a favorite spot for these videos, but it's quite convenient, it's nice to be outside. So, today's video. I'm not even sure what title to put up for this yet. So, I did a video, um, I think it was last week, or the week before, on crime and punishment in the British Army. What I didn't do in that video was give you any solid examples, real life examples. And I thought, I've got a couple that I can give you, my own personal experiences. In other words, me, when I did something wrong, and what happened to me. I'm gonna give you two, I'll give you two good examples. Well, I think they're good anyway. Two little stories, pull up a sandbag, swing a lantern. So, one of them, I got caught and I got punished. And another one, I got away with. It's quite a serious one as well, actually. So it's confession time. It's gonna be no names, no pack drill. So the first one then, I was a lance jack and I got put on guard. I was on normal duty. Uh, I was second in command of the guard. We used to call it marching relief. It was a weekend guard. It was a Saturday. So we mounted guard at 0600 hours on the Saturday morning. Now, when you do, well, when we did uh, a 24 hour guard or any guard really, when it got to the night period, the full screw, that's the full corporal bombardier that's in charge of the guard, you and him split the night shift between you. One of you has to be sat on the main desk in the guard room. The other one goes and gets his head down. This is an emergency. And the one that sat at the desk is answering the phone, uh, booking people in and out of the camp, things like that, and making sure that the guard change around every two hours. And that's basically, it's normally quite quiet. It gets that quiet dead period. So, of course, that's the crappy period. So, the full screw being the full screw, he says to the second in command, the two IC or the guard, you're getting the shit stick. You're getting the shit shift. So that was that. So I'm in the guard room. Now, at the back of the guard room, we had three or four, or five, I can't remember, prisoner cells, individual cells. And we had about three prisoners in. One of which, one of the prisoners, very good friend of mine. And uh, I got chatting to him because I hadn't seen much of him, obviously. He, he was doing a 28-day stretch and he'd been in for three weeks. He had a week left to do. Got me to the side and I was chatting to him. He said, listen, he said, uh, my girlfriend downtown were quite serious, but I've heard rumours from other lads that have been downtown that she is going to sack me. She's going to bin me because I, I need to get out and see her. And I was like, what? He said, I need to get downtown, Keith. I've got to see her. So, very foolishly, we hatched a plan. I went up to the block, got a carrier bag, stuck some civvies in it for him, brought it down, dropped it into his cell. This is at night time now. And the plan was that once the guard commander had got his head down and I was just left at the front of house, if you like, in the guard room on the, on the desk, that at the back of the guard room where the cells was, there was a door that went out into an exercise yard. I would unlock that, get him down into the exercise yard, and at the other side of the exercise yard, there was another door in the wall that went out into the camp right by the perimeter fence, because obviously the guard room is at the front of the camp. It's by the perimeter fence. And he could easily get under or over that fence so that's what we did i went and got his kit come down dropped the kit into him we hatched a plan i went down and gave him the nod said like it's quiet i've just changed the guard the guard commander's got his head down in there's no one about get your civvies on I'll, I'll get you out so he chucked his civvies on i opened the door got him in the exercise yard opened the other door out into the camp he went out of that i shut the door didn't lock it i left it so he could come back that way and the other door i left them both unlocked and I went and sat back down on the bench desk at the front of the guard room. Absolutely cacking it. I mean, <coughs> I was only a lance jack and you can lose that tape real easy. So I'm sat there watching the clock. The guard's changing over and I'm watching the clock. I'm watching the clock. He promised me he was going to be back well before 0600. Because 0600 hours in the morning uh, or somewhere around that, the uh, orderly officer would come down with the orderly sergeant and the guard commander and they would go round to each cell, each prisoner. Each prisoner would stood by, be stood by his bed 
and as they come in, he'd be at attention. He'd give his name, rank, number, and uh, what offence he'd done under what Army Act and what his sentence was, how many days he'd got left to do, and that he had no complaints or no requests, unless he had some. And that happened on the on the in the morning. So I knew I had to, he had to get back, get the civvies off, me get the civvies away, and him be dressed back in his kit or in bed, ready to get dressed in his kit for zero six hundred in the morning, something like that anyway. So I'm watching the clock. It gets to three o'clock. I keep going down, having a look, no sign of him. Four o'clock. About half past four, quarter to five, I heard a movement at the back. So I goes down the back of the guard room. Sure enough, he's coming through the door. So I went and locked the outside door, locked the inside door, got him back in his cell. He ripped his, uh, he ripped his civvies off and stuck his uh, tracksuit on or whatever. I was getting into his bunk. But I noticed that on the side of his neck, just here, just below the ear, he had the biggest, brightest, reddest love bite you have ever seen. A great big red strawberry love bite right on his neck. You could clearly see what it was. It was well bruised. Now he's been in Nick for three weeks. He's got a week to do. And it wasn't one that was low enough that we could put your collar over it or camouflage it in any way. There was nothing we could do. Could put a plaster on it, could do nothing. So I'm now really cacking it. And so is he. So he gets his head down. Sure enough, in the morning, round comes the orderly officer, the orderly sergeant, guard commander. We all goes down to the cells. We're going round in the rounds. We get to his cell. He stands up, he stood to attention. In they goes. He's spurting off all his stuff, name, rank, number, and all that, while the orderly officer is looking around the cell and not really paying a lot of attention to him. Same as the, the duty sergeant, same with the guard. I'm the only one staring at his neck. I'm sweating <coughs> like a rapist in Toys R Us. He's, he's like looking around. Oh, I think we're going to get caught here. And we didn't. Don't ask me how, but we never got caught for it. Everyone come out and we just cracked on. That was a very, very close. I mean, it had been the end of me. I'd have probably been busted and put in Nick myself for letting a prisoner go downtown. I know it's wrong. I know it's bad form, but I was young and crazy and he was a good mate. So that's one example of uh, something I did, a crime, I feel like an offence in the army, and I got away with it. Now, the next one, I didn't get away with. So it was winter time absolutely hammered out in Germany I've been downtown staggered back on my own absolutely hammered I'm talking serious German snow any of you guys have been out there you know what I mean they get some serious winters it must have been January something like maybe over the Christmas period anyway it was a weekend and I come staggering through the guard room managed to like not get pulled for coming through and camp drunk I was on my own now before you got to our main block, the accommodation block, there was a, a, a large football, there was a parade square, and then just beyond that, before you got to the block, was a football pitch with a 400 metre running track around it. Obviously, what you're supposed to do is walk the, the, the road that goes round the parade square and round the football pitch to get to the block. But I thought, it's Amory, there's that snow coming straight at me, I couldn't even see, I'd be head down like that. I'm tabbing across, I thought, I'm just going to cut across the parade square and the football pitch, sod it. Know what about? So off I went, tabbing across there. Um, got to uh, got about halfway across the parade square. Kept going, kept tabbing towards the football pitch. Got onto the football pitch, and now I'm like knee deep in snow. It hadn't been cleared, and it's blowing in my eyes. I couldn't see nothing. And what I did was as I was walking across with my head down, I got slightly disorientated, and I walked straight between the goalposts of one of the goals, straight into the net they'd left the white net on it i think my right arm had gone through one of the holes in the net and my left leg and the more i struggled to get out of that net the more i got caught up in it in the end i'm like just a twisted tangled mess in this and i'm, <laughs> I'm very drunk and i'm giggling to myself luckily maybe for me in one way i have had hypothermia prowler sentry come walking past with his pickaxe and saw me come over He's trying to get me out. He gets caught in the net. So now there's two of us, the Prowler Sentry and me, both of us completely tangled in the snow in the goal net. Somebody else from the guard comes out. Oh, the duty clutch must have seen us. Somebody can, they come out with a little pair of secateurs from the officer's mess gardening cupboard or whatever, and they cut us out of the goal net, a pair of us. Obviously ruined the goal net. 
I got bungled in Nick for the night till the morning. In the morning, taking up to my room, PT kit on, and I was ragged around the camp doing battle PT. Must have been a Sunday morning by the PTIs. And it's messed about me all day. Messed me about all day. Until it got to Monday morning, and straight away up on OC's orders, stood in front of him. Do you accept my award? Yes, sir, I accept your award. I got seven days restrictions of privileges, and uh, I paid £30 for a new goal net, somewhere like that. So there's two examples, one where I got away with it and one where I didn't. There is others, but I'm not going to go into it. But if anyone else has done something and got away with it, especially if it's a reasonably funny story, I'd like to hear about it in the comments. Thanks for subscribing, everybody. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for the comments. I'm enjoying it. I hope so do you guys as well. And uh, till the next time, let's tap.